Hi guys, Snapple here. I'm just going to walk you through how to add a DV data block uh, to your display by using this GoFanCo Prophecy 4K EDID emulator. I'll put all the links you need for this in the description of the video. Um, as you can see, it's out of stock right now. It does seem to come in and out of stock. It's also available on eBay. Okay, once you get the device, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and set it up for this bypass mode. And you wanna plug in your display and your source and set everything to the dip switches being off, including this pin one and uh, two through six. Plug everything in and make sure that your display works um, as expected. Next, you want to download and install the GoFanCo software. Um, you're then going to pull this thing up, plug into your plug the uh, GoFanco into your computer, and hit this reconnect button. Then you want to hit read EDID from display. Once you have uh, done that, go ahead and hit save as and save it as some file name. Okay, the next thing we want to do is check out that that file looks reasonable. So we're going to go to this website here. Again, this will be in the link. Choose the file. And now we're going to get the parsed information from the EDID on this website. And one thing you want to do is, well, first scroll down and make sure that it looks reasonable. Maybe if it didn't capture correctly, this is going to be all zeros or something like that. You want to make sure it's got some data in there. Then scroll down to the bottom and check for any warnings and failures. Um, you'll see here that actually just straight out um, from the vendors, there's already a few errors here. But mainly you just want to make note of this because when you go and modify it, you want to make sure you're not adding any additional errors. Okay, now that you've got that done, you need to download and install a hex editor. Um, again, this I'll put this link uh, in the description. Uh, download for your language. And then op install and open up that guy. Now go and open up the file that um, you captured. And um, you should see the hex open up over here. Okay, now a few important things about this file. Um, it's really um, broken out into two blocks of 128 bytes. We're going to be dealing with the second block, which is down here. This start always starts with 0203. And then you've got this checksum byte that's at the end. This third byte here is also critical. This is the number of bytes in, that are valid inside of this 128 uh, byte descriptor. Okay, so let's take that 6A and then we're going to go to Windows Calculator, switch to Programmer Mode, um, switch to Hex, put in 6A, switch back to Decimal, and we'll see that's 106. Now, the DV descriptor that we're going to be adding is an additional 12 bytes of data. So let's go ahead and add 12 to this and then switch back to hex, seven, six. Okay, so we want to change this byte to seven, six. Now we want to go and get the descriptor that we want to inject. That descriptor is available here. So we will split our windows. Now we need to figure out what position we need to um, put this in in the file. So remember that we started off with 106. That means that there was 106 bytes in the file um, when we started. So starting from here, we've got um, a row of 16, 32, 64, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106. So that means that here, starting at 
byte 107 is where we can start putting in our descriptor. So we'll just go ahead and do that. All right, now we've got the descriptor in the file. So let's save this as another file name. Hit save. And now let's go back to our EDID processor. Now we will we'll load in our file that we modified. And we see that we have not added any uh, new errors except for this checksum here. Okay, that as I mentioned, the last byte in the file is the checksum. So it was 64, it's saying that it should be DF. Okay, easy enough. Let's just go ahead in here, change the 64 to DF, and hit save. All right, now we're going to refresh here, choose the file again, open it up. And now we don't, we just see the same warnings that we had before we did anything. But now if you scroll up, you will see that we have our DV uh, data block here with the um, max nits set to 332. There's actually only five bits for the nets, even nits, even though I know people talk about using 300, there's actually not that much resolution in here. But anyway, this is the 300 target. Okay, now once you're once you've got that, you just want to go back into the HDMI tool, um, open up the new file that you've created, and then you just want to do write EDID into device. Okay, once you've done that, you want to go back to your dip switches and um, make sure that you're leaving pin one in the off position for the HDMI EDID mode. And then take a look at pins two through pin six. We want to use this mode 17 here, which has pin two on and pin six on. Once you do that, um, plug everything in again, go to your source and check if you now have Dolby Vision available. I'm using an NVIDIA Shield, which makes it really easy um, because you can immediately see whether or not uh, it detects that there's Dolby Vision on whatever source you're using. Uh, you might have to actually play around with some video to get it to work. Uh, one note is that you will have to go into the projector and manually switch the color uh, to HDR mode. Uh, this will not send the signal telling it that it's going to be uh, displaying in HDR mode, so you will have to switch the projector there manually. Uh, hope this helps, um, and if you got any questions, let me know in the comments or over on AVS.